The challenge was straightforward, $20,000 for anyone who could find water or precious metals using the ancient art of divining. The money has been on offer for four years and diviners who make a living selling their talents to farmers have tried and failed. What was different this time was that a qualified scientist working for the CSIRO was among the challenges. Eric Campbell reports. So you're confident that you're going to walk away with $20,000? I'm sure of it. I'm not thinking it. I think water diviners are self-deluded. They're not frauds. They're deluded. Anyone can try it. Take a bit of coat hanger wire, wander out in your backyard, look around for water, and the chances are you'll get a reaction. Now, what causes that is a matter for hot debate, but it's about to be put to the test, and the stakes are high. In fact, I intend to jump from the gap if I'm proved wrong on this issue. Philip Adams is a well-known critic of things paranormal who's putting up $10,000 to say diviners are cranks. Madam Dick Smith and I used to be both true believers. We were ready to believe in almost anything in the paranormal area, but we were bitterly disappointed whenever we tested it. So that's The adventurer and businessman Dick Smith is matching Adam's offer to make a $20,000 lure for diviners to have their skills tested scientifically. Well, I think it's very unlikely that anyone will claim it. I'd say it's about 99.9% .9 that uh, they won't be able to perform as they claim. Well, I think we're just finding that uh, textual discontinuity in the profile again. Yep, so here we go, there's, there's something happened there something already. Down there, isn't the it? challenge is to prove once and for all that divining is not just a matter of chance. See, there we go, and if I step back, back comes the wire there. And the hot favourite is Dr Baden-Williams. If anyone's got the credentials to prove it scientifically, it's him. He's a soil scientist with the CSIRO. We were uh, involved in techniques for salinity survey and, and looking for shallow aquifers uh, using electronic uh, techniques. And it just seemed to us at the time that we were doing uh, the same sort of thing that diviners were doing, in the sense that uh, the Earth is being bombarded uh, from all directions by uh, low-frequency radio signals, and diviners are somehow uh, sensitive to the waves that are coming back out of the surface. There she goes. Is this psychological? Spend some time with Dr Williams and you can't help thinking there's something to it. I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> well, what is it that moves the sticks then? It's what they call idiomotor reaction. The mind says, I think there's water there, or the mind says, I think there's a bit of metal there, a bit of wire, and that moves the muscles in the hands. It's as simple as that. So who's right? There's one bottle which is in a hole in the left yeah. and a second one which is somewhere on the right. Under the strictest of conditions agreed to by both sides, Dr Williams and eight leading diviners came from all around Australia to undergo the test. I had sufficient confidence for myself. I charged an aircraft to come down here. Oh, wonderful. They came armed with pendulums, sticks, even bare hands to claim a $20,000 prize and prove the sceptics wrong. <laughs> I see, I've got to think that it's there. No, no, you haven't. You didn't think that it's not there and it still works. Does it? And that's the question. Can they find water, nuggets or wire hidden underneath a carpet? Now, the, the test is actually a double blind test because the sceptics are putting the bottle underneath the carpet in a particular position, but we don't know where it is, and the two people who do know where it is, they'll go away. The contestants have to pick the objects enough times to prove it's not just chance. And they're eliminated if their score drops below 50%. Now, approximately how successful are you normally at dousing, do you think? Well, it all depends on the circumstances. First contestant was Sam Meek. He didn't expect to win. There's better men here than what I am, and they're bound to take the money. And he didn't. Three out of eight, and as that's... As that's man. less than 50%, I'm afraid we regard that as more in accordance with chance than with a, a defining home. ability. But then out came the big guns. Dan Gleeson is the mayor of Thurungawa in North Queensland. He has a divining reputation second to none. So I've divined water out of helicopters and I could pick up the water in the Artesian Basin from 9,500 feet up. So this one today should be pretty easy for you then? It uh, should be. What do you think your chances are today? Well, I reckon they're, they're excellent. Yeah, would you put a percentage on it? Uh, about 100%. 100%, you're that confident? Yeah. On your mm. third row, you chose hole four and it yeah. was in hole four. Yeah. So that's a hit. And on the, your fourth row, you chose hole three, three and it was in five. hole five. So that's a miss. 
Yeah. Barry, what's the aggregate score is now one out of four. Yeah. So I'm afraid uh, we regard that as being in accordance with chance rather than a divining ability. And thank you very much for coming, Dan. Well, Dan, really knocked out in the second round. Mate, what happened? Oh, it just didn't work, did it? Which is unusual. Something was going terribly wrong. Hans Guggenbull, who uses the bare hands technique, is a champion in Switzerland, but not in Australia. Oh, zero out of four. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, we don't have a demonstration of divining abilities here. I'm nervous and think that is the problem. Others started finding fault with the way the test had been run. Uh, there's a problem there, mate. There's water underneath. There's water underneath there, isn't there? There's water underneath the ground. You can't define water on water. Respond to the carpet that then. The gold wasn't there. It's there, but there's something travelling along the carpet. It's, yeah. it's, it's putting me off. And it wasn't in the carpet when you did your trial run. No, because there's nothing, there nothing there. You did a very thorough test no, to we check told the powers that were No, no, but when the bottle was set down where you could see it, you got a no, very good we, reading. No, we could do it over here. No, no, but whenever yeah. the bottle was down, I noticed that when you could see it, you got a very good reading. But there should the be no it's explanation been... for that. No, maybe the explanation mm -hmm. is that the rods will move when you can see it, and no. when you can't see it, they don't move. You can watch in my hands, I can't make them move. I can't make that rod move around. That's fair enough. The only problem is that they could have been a bit better further apart, you know what I mean? Whenever we do a test, normally people are absolutely happy until they fail, and then they have incredible excuses. It might be the sun, the angle of the sun, or it might be that someone's vehicle is close by, or quite often it's the fact that there are cameras around or something, and uh, it does make it very difficult. Intuitive diviners had struck out. It was left to our scientist to try to carry the day. Baden, this is the big day. How are you feeling? Nervous. Nervous? <laughs> yes, quite nervous actually. I think it'll do me good to have a, an independent test because uh, I think um, it's easy to talk yourself into a reaction. You see something, you'll react to it 100% of the time. Um, blindfolding myself, I sort of dropped down to about 60% uh, when I tried it out last week. Um, in this circumstance, uh, yeah, I'd hope I could do 60% or better. Well, congratulations, Baden. That's correct on your first... Row. Yeah, I wouldn't get too excited yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you bomb out, will you decide that you can't do it after all? Ah, um, I, I would certainly not be able to, uh, to defend it as vigorously as I've defended it before. So, since it scores one out of four, that's below 50%. So, according to the protocol we agreed on, that's regarded as a failure. That's right, I'd agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, Baden, do you regard yourself as a failure as a Madonna? Uh, I'd have to seriously rethink it, wouldn't I? <laughs> and so, at the end of the day, no one claimed the money. And against all the evidence of the tests, most of the diviners were unshaken in their belief. This hasn't shaken your faith in divining at all? Yes, it, no, not in divining. It's, this, is not, this is not the right grounds for it. No, I don't think we've made any impression on them at all. I'd be very surprised, and uh, I think they'll still have their beliefs. But a lot of people who watch this show will stop and think in future whether you should have some evidence before you believe in something. Oh, those sceptics are hard men, I don't know. And we won't see Philip Adams jumping from the gap either. Eric Campbell reporting there. Coming up, a track... This is Ian Bryce of Australian Skeptics. I arranged the 1989 water divining tests. Up to this point we had been approached by quite a few diviners from around Australia and we very much wanted to know whether there was anything at all in divining. So in this case our main aims were firstly that we wanted a flat surface with the water below ground so that the diviners felt as if they were divining in the field. Because we were filming on The Current Affair, we had quite a large audience and it was very important that the tests be double blind. We wanted to present visual results so that we can roll back the carpet and uh, immediately compare the diviner's marker with the bottles. And finally, we wanted the results to be shown immediately so that we can see the diviner's reaction as the truth is uncovered. Well, Dan, knocked down the second round. Mate, what happened? Oh, it just didn't work, did it? All diviners had had the chance to check the conditions on the day and each was quite satisfied that conditions were suitable. Each diviner also tested their device firstly on a bottle of water sitting on the ground, secondly on a bottle of water in the hole below ground and finally with the bottle concealed by carpet. And in fact each diviner confirmed that his rod or device was responding as it always does when he's divining. 
Our tests were conducted as follows. The test range consisted of two rows of five holes and the aim was to place a bottle in one of the five holes in each row selected at random by the throw of a dice. Hence we devised the moving tent method. Two people are in the tent and their first job is to toss the dice to see which hole the bottle goes in. If they toss a six then they simply roll the dice again. If for example they toss a two then as the tent passes hole number two they put the bottle in that hole. And as the tent progresses down the range the carpet is unrolled concealing the locations. Finally the two concealers leave the scene without speaking to anyone. In this way the audience cannot give any clues such as a cough to the diviners as they're walking down the range. After the concealers left the scene the test began. The diviner was brought to the test range and allowed to walk up and down the row of holes divining each one. He then placed a marker next to the hole where he thought the bottle was. He was asked how confident he was in the result and the diviner usually responded 100% certain that it was there. In their direction. Yeah, would you put a percentage on it? Uh, about 100%. 100%, you're that confident? Yeah. As the carpet was rolled back, usually to reveal an empty hole, the reaction of the diviner was one of puzzlement. His rod, which had been responding strongly a moment before, suddenly started to hesitate and eventually stopped moving entirely. Now we'll talk about the results. By chance alone, the diviner could expect to find the bottle one row in five, so the test was repeated until the result was clear one way or the other. The minimum required was four rows and the maximum ten. Diviners often claim they can find water with 100% success. In these tests, all scored less than 50%. So in terms of a test of the claimed abilities, the diviners failed. In fact, all scores were in accordance with chance. Observing the reaction, we can learn a little about what makes the rod move. It seems the rods are not in fact attracted by the water, but are moved unconsciously by the diviner's hands, governed by where he thinks the water is.